All right. Today on the brand manual, we have Taylor Ellerbrock. Taylor, thanks for being on. We are very excited to have you. Uh, you are the executive director of B Community here in, here in the Brazos Valley. Um, for people who aren't totally familiar with that, why don't you kick us off and just tell us what you do? Sure. And thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, we're excited to have our story shared uh, with your audience. Uh, so the bee community, uh, for me, it was born in the classroom. I was a special education teacher and just started to see the reality of life after high school for many of my students, um, learning kind of the staggering statistic that up to 80% of adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities are unemployed, and that's nationwide. Um, we wanted to step into that with a long-term sustainable solution. Um, so if, if the problem is unemployment, oftentimes with that, living lives in isolation, uh, the bee community exists to provide meaningful work and a place of belonging for adults um, with all abilities. And um, so this is what I consider the best job ever and uh, mm -hmm. excited to, to share a little bit more about it with you guys today. Well, the first thing I want to know is B is an acronym, uh, and I'd like you to unpack that a little bit, but also why did why does that lend itself so easily and so well to what it is you guys are building? Yeah, so uh, B stands for Brazos, where we're at, mm -hmm. employment, what we're providing, and then enterprises, which is the way in which we provide the employment. So um, the adults that we employ, um, their job title is being an artisan and they craft different products through our different enterprises that we sell locally and online. And oh, what, uh, so what for kind short of products, what kind of products? Uh, we have a, a, a wide variety of products. Uh, we have uh, soaps and candles, room sprays. We have a pet line with uh, dog treats and uh, pet shampoo. Um, we oh, cool. have jewelry, we'll, we'll do gift boxes, um, we have um, some handmade stationery, so we shred documents um, for different local businesses, and then we take the recycled shreds and recycle them into a new paper stationery, uh, cool. so we're always looking to, to grow and add new products, um, but B, um, so that's what it stands for, um, we, uh, the important part of our um, mission statement, the meaningful work um, is represented there and then the place of belonging represented in the community. Mm. So people often mistake that for us being beekeepers. Uh, right. We do not in fact uh, interact with any insects on a regular basis. <laughs> um, however, um, there are a lot of parallels uh, being yeah. worker bees and just the true sense of community. Um, so um, just kind of a, a play on play on words and um, you can see that kind of reflected in, in our branding a bit too. Oh, I love that. So how did, how did all of this get started? I mean, you mentioned that you were a teacher. Uh, how, I mean, one day you wake up and you're like, I've got it. I've got the solution. <laughs> so it was actually many, many years of, uh, of dreaming and, and, and researching and, um, uh, figuring out uh, what the, the reality really looks like and, and um, different options um, to kind of step into that. So uh, about uh, four or five years um, were spent just learning and uh, visiting other organizations, doing similar work, um, meeting with families um, that uh, were kind of walking this road personally. Um, some close family friends, the Jones family, um, came alongside and, and really were uh, critical in being co-founders of the Bee community. They themselves have two daughters um, with autism that um, were, were walking this road in the transition after high school. So uh, we sat down and decided we were going to do something. <laughs> Not entirely sure what that something was going to look like, but as we learned and, and researched and, and prayed and dreamt around their dining room table, um, the bee community began to sh take shape um, as, as we um, saw some ideas of, of what worked and, and, and what wasn't working and um, how to really provide that long-term kind of sustainable um, solution to this un unemployment crisis, as we've dubbed it. 
and um, as as we started kind of getting a little more um, uh, bones uh, to the skeleton in place, if you will, we um, just started sharing um, the vision with other people here locally. We ha hosted a series of vision nights, just simply that uh, casting vision for for what we were striving to do, and, and the response was just incredible. Seeing um, uh, yes, families that um, were, were touched by disability, um, but really just community members um, that uh, believed in the mission and wanted to come alongside um, with their unique gifts and areas of expertise to, to help build this. Taylor, let me ask you a question. Could you uh, sort of tell me two stories? Like, give me, you know, you started the interview with uh, the statistic of 80%, right? So what, what is um, a worst case scenario of a young person with disabilities and that doesn't actually get to benefit from what B is about? <clears throat> and then also give me, a, give me a success story of where you're able to say, this is a, you know, a, a sort of best case scenario. Yeah, so I, I could even share them in, in one. Um, and uh, many, many of our artisans um, had, prior to the B community spent years um, at home just on the couch. Um, so for example, the, um, uh, the, the Jones family that um, are just so instrumental in, in who B community is and what, what, we, what we've become, um, their um, older daughter um, was um, unable to gain or maintain employment in the competitive workforce for a variety of reasons. And um, their younger daughter was, was able to have gainful, meaningful employment um, in the competitive workforce. And so that left um, uh, Emily, the older daughter at home um, on the couch while her sister went off to work each day, kind of lacking that meaning and purpose. Um, we've had other individuals who um, have held um, multiple jobs in the community, but um, their story is that they were they continued to to lose their job um, over and over again, um, and kind of came came to us with a, a sense of defeat and mm. having um, lost um, lost purpose, and um, so we. Um, have, have seen that individual um, grow in um, being, uh, have, having a sense of security um, that I'm not going to lose this job. I'm not just waiting, waiting for the, the ball to drop and, and things to, to fall apart again, but um, I'm able to, to get the supports that I need to be able to access work. So when there's a bad day, we're able to work through that and come back tomorrow with a fresh start um, rather than just, um, being told not to come back. Um, I think in other scenarios, we've seen some individuals um, just haven't even been able to um, open the door to explore opportunities um, for um, uh, employment and kind of the, the typical workforce. So a, a wide spectrum you see of, um, uh, of stories of where, where individuals have come from um, and um, their different, different abilities that um, maybe um, limit those opportunities or circumstances that have um, uh, created a, a particular narrative in their head uh, about their ability to work. And so um, uh, success, you know, to us is, um, you know, that they are meaningfully engaged in, in work mm -hmm. here at the B community, experiencing that sense of of dignity and, and just worth that I, um, I'm contributing to, to, to the community and, and um, simultaneously, um, I, 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 I feel like I have, I have a purpose. I have a reason to wake up in the morning and I have um, friends, colleagues, coworkers um, to do that alongside with. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's not just about people uh, being available. It's like now people are expecting you to show up. So there's a little bit more, fit, right. right? Totally. Man, yes. I love that. So, uh, how long has this organization been going? We will, um, have our third birthday in uh, next month, September. Oh, so we awesome. launched in September of 2018. 
was there any was there any specific time that you thought okay this actually has legs like this is actually working and we're outside of startup mode but it's actually going and i can see the future for it yeah looking back um there was always this uh tension between man we could stay in startup mode forever mm -hmm. <laughs> we could we could just keep keep dreaming, keep casting vision and um, keep planning and uh, researching and developing enterprise ideas or figuring out um, schedules and how to best train volunteers and all, all of these moving pieces. And there just eventually became a time where we're like, we just got to jump. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and we, you know, having had rocks in place that were at least somewhat of a foundation, but um, jumping in and saying we're gonna we we had a phrase we kept saying and honestly still say it probably um, too often is we're gonna keep building this plane as we fly it and we're we're, we're there are going to be pieces that we uh, need to 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 learn and, and adjust and we'll fail forward and we'll try again so um, yeah there 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 was kind of that tension early on just we we gotta we gotta jump and. Um, I, th I think as as we jumped, we felt so buoyed by by the community, and I, I think that was really reassuring. Uh, seeing the volunteers and and donors and uh, families come alongside, and um, as I mentioned a bit earlier, you know, we had people from all different areas of expertise that were willing to lend um, their talents and their skills um, to help kind of buoy and, and, and build uh, the deep community. And so I think that's really where it felt like this is, uh, this is worth continuing and worth, right. worth jumping and, and learning how to swim is having, having that support of um, individuals who had yeah. skills that, that I didn't have and um, couldn't well, bring to the table. To that point, how, what do you need? How does somebody get involved? We have a, a lot of opportunities to, to engage with the bee community. Um, you know, simple would be um, shopping our products, becoming a customer. We have uh, our products all available on our website. We'll ship anywhere in the United States. You can also come uh, to our location. We just opened our retail store. So if you wanna cool. um, come have, have a little tour of our space and see the artisans at, at work and and shop the products. Um, we're open Monday through Friday, nine to three. All of that's also on the website. Um, so that's that's an entry entry level way to get involved. As, as um, uh, there's more interest, we have a, a ton of volunteer opportunities. Whether that's a one time service project with a small group or or, or similar organization, uh, we have also our recurring opportunities where. Uh, volunteers serve on a variety of different teams, can work alongside the artisans, build friendship with them. And then as a nonprofit, we're always um, uh, looking for people to partner with us financially, whether that's one time or on a monthly basis. So um, those are a few, few current needs. Um, and um, our, our website has a lot of those kind of spelled out for, for people to connect with us. Plug that website. Tell us what's the URL. So www.thebeecommunity, so B E E community.com. Love it. Taylor, thanks for being on today. I think uh, I think you are doing meaningful and valuable work and we've loved hearing your story. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for helping get it out into the world and um, appreciate what y'all are doing to to help um, lend your areas of expertise with um, uh, other organizations. Appreciate it. Great. Right. Thanks, Taylor. Take care. Yeah, you bet.